Hi, this one popped up on the EEV blog forum. It's a new solar cell manufacturing technology and I love renewable energy solar power. I've got my own solar rooftop system. I've done a ton of videos on it. So let's take a quick look at this, shall we? Um, it's from a company called Rayton Solar and somebody on the EEV blog forum was you know, complaining, nah, what is this? It smells a bit... <laughs> you know, bs -y. Um, well, let's, uh, let's check it out, shall we? Rayton Solar, they claim to have come up with, uh, a process, a manufacturing process, will make them 60% cheaper and 25% more efficient than the market standard. Beautiful. But, hey, every man and his dog is trying to, uh, work on this anyway. They're raising money, uh, to do this. And they're currently on a website I haven't really heard of, Start Engine. It's one of these, uh, uh, capital raising. You can buy equity in a company. So it's like a crowdfunding equity, uh, kind of thing. So they've raised three, almost $3.2 million of their goal of $50 million, so 2,344 investors um, have so far contributed at least $500. You've got to contribute $500. So, hey, good on them, right? They're raising money and they've recruited none other than Bill Nye, the science guy. And uh, take it away, Bill. Let's extol the virtues of this wonderful new manufacturing technology. We can convert sunlight into electricity with a couple of thin silicon wafers in a sandwich. <laughs> a very thin one. For decades, to get a thin piece of pure oh, silicon, we had to saw it off a thick piece of pure silicon. Yep. The saw turns a lot of that silicon into dust. This process Big is waste. fine for making yep. integrated circuit chips for computers or smartphones because the amount of silicon used is so small. But for manufacturing big solar panels out in the wide open spaces, yeah, big green it costs screen a bill. lot to waste a lot of pure silicon. The gang at Rayton Solar has They're come up with a way to chip off an extraordinarily thin piece of pure silicon. Three microns. Not with a saw, that, but with a really subatomic particle accelerator. An atom smasher. Well, it doesn't smash atoms as such. It doesn't smash atoms. It atom. smashes protons into the it's atoms a proton of beam. a chunk of silicon. Now, technicians can control the depth to which these particles penetrate with precision. So they can place the particles perfectly. And once the particles are perfectly in place, Rayton gives the right them angle. a nudge using a little bit of heat it of just the right three magnitude. Three microns and thick. And a perfect this super awesome, thin slice right? of pure silicon is set free. A little bit of pure silicon goes a yep. long way. Sounds great. So Rayton. That'll do. Anyway, so what they're, uh, what they're doing, which is really cool. I like the idea, right? The concept is really good. There is a lot of waste in silicon uh, wafers. We'll have a look at some um, other, some data on that in a minute. And typically like uh, 200 microns might be a typical wafer that they slice off and there's a lot of waste and everything. They claim to be able to just shave off with a particle ion particle uh, proton particle accelerator, shave off a three micron thick uh, part. So there's less wastage of the cell. And hey, great idea in theory. Now, first of all, this is not their first attempt at actually raising money for this thing. They've been going uh, for quite some time. Back in uh, 2014, I think it was, 2014, 2015, they ran an Indiegogo campaign. Unfortunately, they only raised five grand of their $50,000 flexible goal. I'm not sure what they were going to produce with their uh, $50,000, but now they're talking about they're so th uh, thin that they're flexible and everything else. Okay, fine, but that doesn't seem to be there. Um, maybe they've like changed their focus. Maybe it used to be like uh, uh, like flexible solar cells. Now they're just uh, you know concerned with like mass producing and uh, commercial and residential rooftop solar cells just cheaper, which is fantastic. And you know look stock images of particle accelerators and everything else. Once again, like Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, yes. Why on earth? Why have that? On your web, like on your Indiegogo campaign, like American Jobs. I, okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, ridiculous. Um, so they didn't raise that. So now, but they've raised, now raising serious capital, right? 3.1 million. They're on their way to their uh, 50 
million bucks. So is it true that uh, we waste a lot of these silicon ingots uh, for manufacturing um, solar cells? Well, uh, well, actual silicon wafers, which then go into solar cells. Yes, it is. There's, you know, articles over here and, uh, you know, raw material 50%, over 50% uh, is machined into dust and stuff like that. So yes, it's true. There's a lot of wastage or what's called uh, kerf loss in this ingot manufacturing when you slice the silicon wafers off. So, you know, have they come up with some new whiz bang technology to do this? Well, yes, but they're not the only ones. And here is the first thing you've got to realize. Yeah, they've got this patent on this uh, technique of the uh, proton beam coming in, slicing off three, uh, you know, a micron thick layer and stuff like that. But my first thought is it requires a proton particle accelerator like these things cost like serious money they're big machines you want to use one of these for uh production environments yeah okay maybe at a scale if it works but the thing to realize is that they're not the only ones working on this of course every man and his dog working on silicon uh wafer manufacturer for solar cell production there's many companies around the world are continually researching and optimizing new ways. Here's back in 2015, an article in uh, physics.org or whatever it is um, on the Fraunhofer Institute, which are coming up with a new way to actually produce an ingot to do this. And if you go over, um, here it is. The, there's their press release for it uh, back in uh, 2015. You know, yeah, they're, they're trying to solve exactly the same problem. They're not the only ones to do this. And the way they're going to do it, uh, you can read all the details for yourself, is to, to basically uh, produce ingots in a different way instead of you know, using your regular silicon chip pure ingots and stuff like that just manufacture them differently and here's another company called applied materials this is a um, arpa uh, thing so this is a government initiative and they're working to actually do exactly the same thing and like two seconds google search just turned up this sort of stuff um so they've got that they got a five million dollar government grant by for, from arpa to actually do this they're in santa clara and uh like Okay, there's many different ways. So I'm not sure that like my first reaction to this is like, yeah, okay, it sounds really cool with tech and I'm sure it is, but maybe using an ion, an ion beam to shave off three microns is probably not the best way to do it. Maybe there's some other way to grow the, uh, the ingot, the silicon ingot and to produce less waste at cheaper material. Okay, so let's actually have a look at their specific claims. One is that they use 50 to 100 times less silicon. Okay, granted, yep, we'll give them that. No worries, you come up with a, a nice new method for uh, slicing off thin wafers. Beauty. Okay, uh, the cost, 60% cheaper. Man, this is not 60% cheaper solar panels on your roof, by the way, where installation costs and other system costs actually uh, matter. It's just the raw manufacturing costs. They, so they claim to be 60% cheaper on just the raw panel or raw wafer, I'm not sure which. Manufacturing process will take it as the entire process. So 60% cheaper panels. Well, they're getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper every year. So yeah, you've got to stay ahead of the curve there. But hey, we'll just take them at face value there, even though they've provided no evidence for this 60% cheaper. Where they've got that number from, we just don't know. Maybe you could dig deeper somewhere, but on the surface, I haven't found it. Now, efficiency, um, they claim to have the potential to achieve a 24% efficiency versus a 19% uh, high level a single cell efficiency rate. Well, let's go and have a look at current solar panels, shall we? This is a 2017 uh, article. I believe it's pretty new. So the data is fairly new from manufacturers and they 19. Yeah. Okay. The bulk is going to maybe we'll, we'll take them at that value 19, but manufacturers like Panasonic and SunPower, for example, they are up to 21, 22% efficiency already. So, you know, as the March of technology continues every year, they're just getting more efficient for a lower price, but Hey, we'll, we'll give them that we'll, we'll pay that one that, typically 19% at the moment, go to 24%, there's your 25% uh, more efficient. So yeah, their number is, you know, spot on. But once again, where is their data? Where I don't see any data whatsoever to back this up. Um, in fact, I don't see anything at all on their website that actually, apart from fancy graphics, 
Um, I don't see any test results. I don't see any performance curves, efficiency curves. I don't see any measurements at all in any of this. And like if you go into updates, there's just some update about uh, we're going to buy the, you know, here's an, an accelerator. We're about to buy one if we get enough cash. Um, so, accelerator. you know, we have our, uh, we have the most. Andrew Yacob, please join G'day, me, Andrew. Solar, as we change please the way the world us. gets its energy. We're going to change the world, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't see any data whatsoever. And check this out. If we go over to their YouTube channel, um, there is some bizarre mix of what like how to get along with your extended family at thanksgiving um how to do a facial mask what 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 what's going on here mixed in with we've got our accelerator on the way uh, oil versus solar and i uh, like and his bill nye back 10 months ago he did this apparently uh presents and there's some beauty tips and like mixed in anyway there is one the only demo they've got is this which is their solar cell demo it looks like they've embedded a solar cell in a condom and they've um that's the little so they've produced one little wafer but like where's the measurements okay it might be three microns thick and and they've proven that their tech kind of sort of works but like no show me the data all right i'm not convinced unless we get the data so that's one of one of the big things that I'm suspicious of is that they're all talk, they're all hype, they're all marketing, and they might have a cool a, a patent on a cool idea, but that doesn't turn into practical reality. So let's go and actually have a look. If you decide to invest in this company, uh, the risk factors. This is the Securities and Exchange Commission government website specifically for this. Uh, uh, rate on solar investment um, scheme because you have to do the risks you have to uh, give all this documentation um, the, the company has raised significant has realized significant operating losses to date and expects to incur losses in the future the company has operated at a loss since its inception and they they made a seven hundred and twenty thousand dollar loss in 2015 so I don't know what 2016 and half of 2017 they've uh, lost um, <laughs> We will have to seek, until the company achieves profitability, we'll have to seek other sources of capital in order to continue operations. Yep. And this is a bit of a red flag. Uh, if the company cannot raise sufficient funds, it will not succeed or will require significant additional capital infusions. It is offering common stock up to $50 million, but it may get much less. After $7 million is raised, the following $3 million will go to the selling security holders, even if the maximum amount is raised. So even if they raise... 50 million dollars that they're after the company's likely to need additional few funds in the future in order to grow and if it cannot raise those funds for whatever reason including reasons outside the company's control such as another significant downturn or it just wasn't as practical as they thought it would be it would cost more money etc etc it may not survive if the company does not sell all of the common stock offering it will have to find other sources of revenue even if they are successful in selling all the common stock being offered rate on solar proposal business will require additional capital infusion based on its current estimates they'll require at least 35 million dollars so if they don't get their 30 if they don't raise 35 million they've already raised what three and a half million or whatever if they don't raise raise 10 times more than that they're not going to be able to get their 54 megawatt uh, reactor thing to create these ingots and they're just going to go out of business like it, <laughs> high stakes all or nothing um this amount does not include does not include the amount needed to manufacture the pv modules for sale uh, i mean there's not generated any revenue like the company is at an early stage operations could be adversely affected by interruptions of productions that are beyond the company's control and it, yeah it, it's all in here you know um if you Go in and read it. And I haven't read it all. And it's probably, there's a ton of stuff in here that uh, you can read to show that, well, they're, yeah, a startup with no data on their cell that I can find anyway. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'll, li I'll link it in uh, down below if there is. Um, and on the EV blog forum link for this. Um, but yeah, I, it, it just sounds, no. Like they've got this, they've got a pattern for an idea. 
They've gone into startup mode. Right, tried to. They did an unsuccessful Indiegogo. That was a complete flop. And then they went, aha, we can do equity crowdfunding. We'll pay Bill. We'll fork up the money. I don't know where they got the money from. I don't know how much it costs uh, to get Bill Nye on here. But yeah, we get Bill Nye and it'll go viral on Facebook because it's Bill Nye. And, and it, great marketing. Hats off, right? They've uh, done a, <laughs> a really good marketing job. But that seems to be all they have. Until we see the data on this thing, and there's other companies, there's at least two I found, and I could probably find, I'd be surprised if I couldn't find half a dozen working on ways to uh, reduce the loss in silicon wafers. Um, because, hey, if you're wasting, what is it, 60%, they said, of the cost, uh, menu, reduce the cost by 60% just by eliminating the waste, there's companies working on that. That's what they do. They eliminate waste and inefficiency in their processes to produce more viable products. So this company runs a, like without any data, without showing that it's manufacturable at scale, at cost to get this. They have provide no evidence where they're going to get their cost reduction uh, from in actual manufacturing terms. And there's like they've manufactured one little silicon cell in a condom. Um, so I, yeah. I don't know, flapping around in the breeze there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're like it's not a scam, okay? They're just, yeah, marketing over substance, typical, um, you know, and, and they've done a really good job at marketing this. They really have. Uh, you've got to look into the details before you invest in something like this because to your average punter, to Joe Average on the street, this is, you know, it sounds fantastic. I'm going to invest in solar cell technology of the future and... Yeah, good luck to them. Um, they've already raised 2.8 million in initial funding, so maybe that's where that's what went to Bill Nye. So uh, perhaps not all of it, of course. Um, but yeah, patents pending. Um, yeah, like yeah, they're pending. They may not even get their patent. If so, well, you know, could be all over Red Rover. Huge risk in this one. I just don't see any data to back it up. Lots of fancy infographics. Um, that's if infographic central. I mean, it's just as seen on all the usual crap, right? I don't know. Good good luck to you guys. You look like, you know, it, no, it's not a scam at all. They've just got an interesting idea that may or may not turn out to be practical. So best of luck. But if you're going to invest in this, do your own research. That's for sure. Anyway, that's a look at the uh, Rayton solar system. Hope it works, but I, either way, we're just going to get cheaper and more efficient solar cells as time goes on. So, anyway, good luck to all. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.